After studying the detailed calculation uh, from this worksheet in last video, now let's look at the gap analysis on this worksheet. The calculation here is still the same, except I changed the format a little bit. Uh, let's first look at this uh, change in the profit after a rise in the interest rate. So again, the revenue at the initial interest rate is calculated from uh, this 5%, this is the same 5% times both the interest rate sensitive assets, $20 here, and the interest rate insensitive assets, $80 here. That is $5. On the cost side, uh, at the initial interest rate, we have this same 3% times the $50 interest rate sensitive liability and the $50 interest rate insensitive liabilities. So we have $3 in cost, and the difference is the profit, that's $2. Now for this uh, new interest rate level, let's see. We use this 6% of the new interest rate, the green one here, times this $20, the interest rate sensitive assets. And then it's the same 5% old interest rate times the $80 interest rate insensitive assets. So we got $5.2 in total revenue at a new interest rate level. How about the cost? We use the new 4% interest rate times this $50 interest rate sensitive liabilities, and then the same old 3% times this $50 interest rate insensitive liabilities. Now we got $3.5 cost and the profit is the difference between 5.2 and 3.5 that is 1.7 and the total profit decreased from $2 to $1.7 that's a decrease of 30 cents. Because I assume same amount of increase in the interest rate on both the asset side and the liability side. So I can simplify this calculation just using the gap between the interest rate sensitive assets and the interest rate sensitive liabilities. That gap is this $20 minus this $50. I got minus $30. The gap should always be negative because usually bank has much less interest rate sensitive assets than interest rate sensitive liabilities. And then I use this gap times the change in interest rate. That is the 1% here. So I times these two together, I can get the change in the profit. The reason why I can do this simplified calculation is because I assume it's the same 1% increase in the interest rate on the both liability side and the asset side. Um, 3 to 4% here and 5 to 6% on the asset side. However, if the interest rate change is different from the asset side uh, than the liability side, let's say, you know, here let's increase by 7%. Now you can see my drop in the profit is actually less because I got more revenue on this $20 here. I got kind of 1% uh, more than, you know, when it rises to 6%. I got a little bit more revenue on this $20 here. So uh, the drop in the profit is not that much. Uh, but uh, if, you know, let's say the average change, maybe 1.5%. Uh, from the gap analysis, we still could not get the right number. So if the interest rate change is the same for both assets and liabilities, uh, you can use the gap analysis. But uh, if the interest rate change is different uh, on the two sides, 
right? Interest rate change is one number uh, on the asset side and another number on the liability side. Uh, you'd better do this uh, whole calculation uh, based on the different interest rate and the interest rate sensitive assets and liabilities rather than do this gap calculation.